Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. Kerala is facing one of its worst floods in the last 100 years. On the show this week, we have Union Minister K.J. Alphonse, who is the minister who is supervising the rehabilitation measures in the state. I welcome, sir, on To The Point. Thank you. Uh, my first question to you is, sir, that everybody is saying that it's one of the worst floods in Kerala, which, which the state has seen in the last 100 years. Yeah. Uh, you have seen the places around. What is the real scale of destruction? Oh, this is Kerala is devastated. It's the worst flood since 1924. That's almost 100 years. Uh, 12 out of 14 districts are very badly affected. Of course, every district is affected and it's in a really bad shape. And uh, it's now uh, Kerala has been submerged now for close to two weeks now. Right. Some parts, three weeks. Right. So things are really bad. Okay. So uh, now where are the rehabilitation measures? Uh, uh, really, I mean, how are they taking forward? Because uh, there's a lot of relief which is pouring in from across the world, from across states. Uh, how is this coordination happening that people reach out to the places which are actually destroyed and reach out to those people who have been affected? Yeah, the Honorable Prime Minister was there uh, day for us today and then he had uh, come and reviewed uh, the entire situation, promised a uh, really big help to Kerala to uh, take, uh, take um, immediate measures for uh, relief operations. He sanctioned 500 crores and earlier Home Minister had sanctioned 100 crores. So money is not a problem and he said Government of India will provide whatever assistance is required for long term reconstruction of Kerala. In fact, Kerala needs to be completely reconstructed. Okay. Now, as on yesterday, we have a million people in the relief camps. Okay. Now, that's a very that's large a number, number of people. Yes. Plus, we have quite a lot of people who are marooned, okay. uh, who we have not been able to kind of uh, um, rescue. Mm -hmm. So, there are a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. Only when the water, water level has been going down for the past two days, so which is actually a huge silver lining. Right. And um, so, hopefully, the water level should go, up, go down um, in many of the areas. Right. And therefore, we should be able to rescue a whole lot of maroon people. Right. Now, our big fear is that a uh, whole lot of people possibly may be dead because uh, lo most of the houses in Kerala are single-story buildings, right. not double-story. So they can't even go up. Mm -hmm. And um, some of these areas like Changanur, Aramula, Korincheri, right. Chalukudi, right. and uh, so these are really, really bad. But, uh, and, uh, but uh, very fortunately, we got complete help from the center. We had all the armed forces. Uh, operating there, we also have the NDRF, paramilitary forces. So we had um, very, very huge support from the Central Armed Forces. Uh, the Prime Minister has been on a day-to-day -day communication with the Chief Minister, the Home Minister and also the Defence Minister. Right. And all assistance has been provided by the Government of India. But you, you just said a short while back that uh, there could be many more people who would have died. So are you expecting that the number of dead is going to rise as the waters recede, there might be more deaths would be, which would be discovered? Yes, I mean, that's what we, uh, we fear. Okay. And um, I hope my fears are, uh, are not uh, really uh, um, founded on, on actual facts when actually it unravels. Right. Right. Uh, we hope uh, nobody is dead, but the fact is that yesterday itself we discovered quite a few bodies in uh, uh, less than 10 right. in Changonur area. Right. And uh, we suspect a lot of people are still trapped. But uh, how far are these reports true that there are a lot many pockets uh, inside Kerala where the rescue teams have not been able to reach? Which are these areas? Because uh, obviously there would be a lot of outcry from those areas. See, you know, one of the one of the, the big heroes of today's action really are the fishermen right. uh, from Kovadam. You know, they suffered devastation in Oki. Right. They very promptly came with all their boats. We have something like 600 boats operating there right. with at, at, uh, really no payment made at all. And they came and operated with fuel they supplied. Right. They are the big heroes. Now, they've been able to go into most of these remote areas. Okay. Yeah. Now, there are some areas where they couldn't go because of the very strong currents in the river right. and the water flow. So, that is where the Army um, and the Navy equipment have been able to go. Okay. Yeah. So, we have reached out to all areas. Okay. And we've been now supplying also food to okay. people now. The most important thing is to ensure that people survive. So our whole focus has been on providing sufficient food to people so that they can survive and uh, then of course rescue them. So these are and of course our uh, relief camps are very well operated by the district collectors. We have a million people close to a million people in the relief camps and they are all looked after because I, I was there in those relief camps yesterday. They are all looked after very well and um, cooked food is being provided and uh, yes and all the medicines are being provided, doctors are there in the camp. So the relief camps are very well organized. Okay. And um, let me also tell you that the entire central and state machinery are working very closely together and things are working very effectively. Okay. 
you also said that uh, a short while back that Kerala is going to be completely uh, reconstructed. Now, if you have to reconstruct a state uh, uh, in, in totality, then obviously the 500 crore, which the amount which initially centre has pledged, obviously it won't be enough. And uh, the state governments also have been demanding that, you know, uh, it should be declared as a natural calamity. So are there any plans of the central government to declare it as a natural calamity? Or we, or the centre is initially uh, pledging 500 crores and then uh, time, um, with time, uh, you know, gradually it will release the amount. What is going to be the methodology of releasing funds? Yes, yeah, see what the Prime Minister and the Home Minister have produced 500 crores by the Honorable Prime Minister and 100 crores from uh, by the um, Honorable um, uh, Home Minister and before that 180 crores was released. All this is for immediate relief. In fact, Centre has provided an advance amount to the state government okay. and as and when they see that it's going to get um, exhausted, they ask for advance and we provide. There's absolutely no problem with money for immediate assist assistance relief at all. Okay. It's not there. So money now, is what not is a problem. So why no, is so see, much no, of politics no, happening no. over well, declaring that, it as a natural calamity? That is just mm -hmm. politics. You see, the proof of the pudding is pudding is in the eating. Absolutely. We are provided such dramatically effective, uh, you know, mach machinery. Mm -hmm. You know, the entire armed forces, paramilitary forces, right. the prime minister, the home minister, defense minister, everybody being involved. In fact, I've been camping there for past two weeks. Right. We are providing it very effectively and the state government, I should say, has been functioning very effectively. Right. So all this is just politics by some unemployed people mm -hmm. who should be actually be taking part in the relief uh, activities and not wasting time on this kind of things. Absolutely. Now, the so long there is term... no need for declaring the present disaster as a natural calamity? That's not an issue at all. Now, right. the long term reconstruction of Kerala once the water recedes, the government of Kerala will make an assessment, whatever is the damages, okay. to public property, to private property, and they'll submit a memorandum. Okay. And the centre will send a team right. who will inspect right. it. Right. And then, of course, money would be provided hmm. uh, provided uh, to the state government based on whatever is the guidelines. Okay. Yeah, we have the disaster management guidelines. Right. So that will be provided. Oh. Now, um, the Prime Minister has already um, instructed the National Highways Authority to repair all the... All the uh, the highways, highways. The roads. no that yes. covers the bulk of the area right now of course we have a larger area of village roads mm -hmm. and i'm sure all this will come under the purview of the central assistance the crop losses the prime minister has, uh, has ordered that immediately the amounts be paid by the insurance companies and right. the crop losses right. so everything is being taken care of what, what is the status of the present connectivity because uh, the airports had shut down and the roads uh, obviously had buckled down. So, what is the present status of the connectivity? How soon uh, can they are the now The Cochin, Cochin airport is shut down. The, the, the naval airport in Cochin is going to fly uh, ATR uh, aircrafts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. so that's going to fly short-term flights from uh, Coimbatore and from Bangalore. Right. So, that's going to be very good for the for Central Kerala. And um, uh, the Trivandrum and the Calicut airports are operating. And the new airport at Kanur. In fact, um, military planes have landed there, relief planes have landed there. Okay. So, uh, it's all pretty coordinated. Now, we are also using the private uh, uh, helipads for various people. Okay. Now, they have, uh, many of them have permitted us to use their uh, helipads. Okay. So, that again helps us. We have about 275 uh, private helipads. Okay, so which means yeah. flying the choppers or going by aeroplane is not a problem because these no. naval strips and uh, airstrips have been created. Uh, so, you are a Keralaite yourself and uh, Kerala is known as a God's own country, rich for rich uh, for its uh, environment, its flora, fauna. What is the main reason, do you think, uh, behind such a big disaster? Uh, well, I think it's, it's God's work. I mean, after all, it's God's own country. Now, to blame it on deforestation is not really true because Kerala is one of the few states where a forest, the, the area of the forest, forest cover has increased right. over the past 10 years. Okay. Yeah, so we've done a very good job. Now, if you look at also those areas where we had a huge, massive landslides, you'll see massive trees are standing on both sides. Okay. So it's not even because of uh, really deforestation. Okay. Uh, no, this is massive rain, unprecedented rain happening in a very short period. Right. And so the rain is all over. So all you're, over the you're saying that it was something which was caught off guard, nobody was prepared for it? Yeah. So I mean, no, it's completely off guard. This was like something like what happened at the Oki. I mean, the, the, we knew that something like the water was coming, but it was predicted that it would turn, uh, before it hit Kerala, it would turn to, to the left towards uh, Lakshadweep. Right. But it suddenly took a turn and, uh, and hit Kerala coast. But these rains were not predicted, and uh, there was huge deviation from whatever is predicted. And of course, we had massive rains in a very, very short period. That's right. when things get clogged. Right. Our, uh, our dams, all of them, 
have been have been opened, shutters opened. But lo but a lot of uh, questions uh, have been raised about the dam upkeep. That why the dams were not emptied in time. Why were they waiting for the dams to get to the full capacity? And then uh, obviously with so much of rain, things were not under control. So what do you have to say at this point of time about the dam safety? Are we needing? Uh, I mean, do we need to learn more lessons from what has really happened? Well. No country actually um, opens out dams before it gets full, filled okay. because water is a very precious resource. Right. So you don't know the rains coming tomorrow, and therefore right. you don't really open the the, the, the um, uh, shutters till uh, the water really fills in. Right. And uh, so uh, that was so that that's what is done normally. Mm -hmm. Get me? No. For example, the dam at Iduki that was uh, full up to the level. That's for power generation. So that water probably could have been utilized but then off guard rains suddenly blew up everything and the situation was out see, of control see there was no way to predict really because you see idiki dam the arch dam which is the largest arch dam in asia has never been opened the shutters never opened right so you don't expect that to fill up to, to kind of overflow isn't it therefore of course we had to open out all the dams this is completely unprecedented so you can't really plan out when your entire 12 district out of 14 districts under in kerala go under water what do you do but let me say that um, the, the response of the center as well as the state has been remarkable. Right. And there are, I mean, you must go to Kerala and see. No, our teams I are mean, going to Kerala. This is compassionate. You see, I can define Kerala as the most compassionate place. Mm -hmm. The people there, it's just incredible. Go to the collection centers where they're collecting materials. Right. Every Keralaite whose house is not underwater is mm -hmm. out there to donate something donate money, donate things. And number two, go and see the volunteers working, school kids, college kids, don't sleep at all, in hundreds. And the kind of enthusiasm with which they move around, oh my God, I've never seen such compassion anywhere in the world. So what my question is that for the first time, uh, we are seeing that uh, there is a center and state coordination. Earlier, you know, there used to be a pattern where a lot of politics was happening between the center and the state. But the way center has reached out to the state, uh, is it the first really glaring example of cooperative federalism and how you really work together in a calamity? See, absolutely. See, the policy of Modi government has been very simple. We respect you of what is, which is a political party. When this kind of a thing happens or anything happens, we work with the state government. This right. has been the avowed policy of the prime minister and the entire government. No, yeah. earlier, in earlier governments, we've seen that there used to be a lot of discrimination also, even in case of tragedies. See, even in Kerala, we had eight ministers in the, in the previous cabinet. Right. Whenever we had a tragedy or something like that, there was absolutely no coordination between the centre and the state, even though it's the same party in power with eight ministers absolutely. from Kerala in the centre. Right. Today, uh, which is incredible, the Prime Minister said, this is our top priority. Right. The whole of India needs to work together. Absolutely. But let me also thank the states. Most of the states have responded with huge financial assistance. Right. I mean, all of them, right up to Nagaland. So and, uh, all, all these uh, financial assistance which is coming from various states, how is it being coordinated? Well, it goes to the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. Okay. And let me tell you that nobody steals money from the Chief Minister's Relief Fund in Kerala. Okay. It goes to the actual, actual beneficiaries, to people for what is needed. And uh, I guess most of that money would be used now for reconstruction of Kerala. Okay. Building houses for the poor, re-establishing water supplies and electricity and a whole lot of things like that. The Honorable Prime Minister also has told the NTPC to ensure that uh, that uh, power power grid is, is uh, re-established. So his instructions to various also line department ministry saying, please ensure things are back to normal in Kerala. Uh, there are a lot of reports uh, which, uh, you know, these days uh, papers are talking about the Guardgill report, that how there were certain recommendations, how environmental laws were violated, and had they not been done, probably Kerala would never have faced a disaster like that. Uh, I would want to know from you that there have been reports also saying that earlier governments have been very casual about, you know, following the environmental laws. Uh, do you hold that also as one of the reasons for really. the disaster? Not really. I think, I think that is a lot of rubbish. I mean, I have the most respect for environment. In fact, when I was a land use commissioner in Kerala, mm -hmm. I held the first environmental protection rally in Kerala over 20 days where half a million people participated. So I'm a huge environmentalist. Kerala is one place where the forest cover has gone up, where people are extremely con cautious, uh, you know, conscious about the environment. Mm -hmm. If you see anybody touching uh, even a branch of a tree, there'll be a, a fire on the police station. You don't find encroachments on the river or on the sea in Kerala. 
you don't no, find. No, because Gadgil report actually talked about the ecological sensitivity of uh, the Western Ghats, which included about six states, and Kerala was part of those states. And uh, the, the ecologically sensitive, uh, I mean, the the extent of the land apparently was uh, watered down, was diluted. That this is not the extent of the land. Uh, and it was watered down later on by Kasturi Rangan. So that is why it forced people to no, say that. No, you see, it is not. This is not true at all. Okay. If you think that Western Ghats people shouldn't live there, mm -hmm. I mean, you you probably 1956 there was a grow more food scheme. It was uh, something which the government of India promote, uh, promoted because there was food shortage. Right. People were in bulk settled in the high ranges. Yes. In the 50s and 60s, there was forest um, loss because all these people were settled there by the government, right. not encroached. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, so you can't just say, yeah, millions of people, the entire Idiki and Vainar districts are people who are settled there by the government. Right. Now you can't turn around and say, well, um, forest has been encroached. Let me tell you, over the past... No, but people have been saying there were a lot of mining and industrial activities happening, a lot of laws were violated. Where is, where is industry in Kerala? You take those two high range districts, I mean the only industry which is there is the tourism industry, right. which is very, very environment friendly. Now you see, um, if you take at least for, just take for example, past 10 years, there's not one inch of forest land in Kerala has been encroached. I can, very authoritative reason for the forest cover has gone up in Kerala. Right. And therefore, so to say that all this is because of people were responsible, when environmental concerns were completely ignored. Not true. This is not true. I mean, when you have a rain like this, it's, it's bound to flood. But what about those reports yeah. where state government has colluded with the local authorities, the local communities, and they've violated all laws? All those sorts of reports no, are coming. No, 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 no. Where are they? I mean, these are not true. I mean, if you might find isolated cases like that, very isolated cases like that, people in India is hugely environmentally conscious. And therefore, uh, it's not happening. But of course, you had uh, party fields being filled up in various places and uh, housing colonies coming up there. So the government of Kerala passed the um, um, environmental law under which uh, they said no party field can be filled up. So even today, no party fields are, are allowed to be filled up today. I mean, so uh, uh, only for government projects can it be allowed. And that too, it goes to the cabinet. Right. So it's not easy at all. So it's one of the few states where even conversion of party fields. Right. Yes, conversion of party fields did take place earlier, mm -hmm. where water could come and stay. But you see, today with the 12 districts in Kerala being completely going flooded, right. even if we have all those party fields, still it would have Absolutely. water, would, it would have uh, flooded Kerala anyway. Tourism, you said, uh, is, is, is of course uh, the main uh, economic driver of the state, and tourism will have been impacted with this disaster. By when are you really expecting the things to get back on track? And what is the time of turnaround, if I could ask you? See, Kerala has a habit of bouncing back quickly because the people are hugely innovative. They are, um, uh, you know, they act as a community and uh, therefore Kerala will bounce back quickly. But you see, the reconstruction of roads, electricity lines, our homestays, which is a very large component of our, uh, of our uh, tourism, homestays. Right. Home right. So these are all going to take a little time. But otherwise, basic infrastructure, a whole lot of things are going to be back pretty soon. Right. But uh, rebuilding millions of homes which got damaged, mm -hmm. rebuilding the, the city roads, the highways, the, the village roads, which are, the, uh, you know, uh, they suffer the brunt of it, that's going to take time, okay. yes. And uh, so that's one of the issues. We're not going to face the worst, as many people are saying that once the waters start receding, worst is yet to come. Many people are talking See, like that. See, um, you know, I don't really know because I, I also suspect that it's not going to be easy because once the water recedes, your entire water sources have been polluted, right. number one. Right. And you have thousands of uh, animals, dead animals on there. You get me? And uh, so, uh, it could cause uh, a health hazard. Right. And, and ho hopefully there won't be an outbreak. I'm just hoping so. Um, so how well are we prepared to face any kind of disease outbreak? Sikara because there are already reports coming in of people having chicken pox. Yeah, there are, there are two cases of chicken pox. So right. those people have been isolated. Okay. Uh, that would not have been caused because of the floods. I think it's a natural phenomenon, chicken pox happening. Okay. Uh, but you see, what we need today, Kerala has excellent doctors. Okay. Medical setup is very, very good. So any relief camp you go, I think the service is very good. But now the increasing problem would be once the water level goes, a whole lot of people would be unwell and the hospitals would not be able to accommodate so many people. 
So, can we have doctors going to these homes now? That's where you're going to have a shortage of doctors. Okay, of so nurses. What, is, what is the plan? See, now I'll tell you, what, a shortage I'll tell you what Kerala requires. Right. This is for global community at large and India. Hmm. We don't need food grains. The center is giving us enough food grains. Okay. Okay? So, Kerala will manage. Okay. Don't send us clothes. Okay. This is a lot of people see as an outpouring of human grief. You want yeah, to you empty. Start no, no, no. Let me finish. Hmm. They want to empty their wardrobes of useless clothes. Hmm. Use clothes. Sorry, Kerala will not use use clothes. Okay. So if they think that's a way to express their sympathy by by emptying their wardrobes of used clothes, please don't. We don't need it. Okay. We have enough medicines, so right. don't send us medicines. We I'm don't sure require. the people who are watching this interview yeah. would listen to you carefully. Yeah. And See what we you. need. Uh, we need thousands of electricians, thousands of plumbers, thousands of carpenters, and yes, we need a whole lot of doctors who can go into homes right. and treat old people who are certainly not. You know, because our hospitals can't have to, can't take in millions of people. Right. So, is there a centralized mechanism by which uh, maybe the governments are trying to rope in doctors from various states that okay, you go and camp yourself cells in Kerala, whether it's plumbers, whether it's carpenters. Uh, what is that system which is going to? See, uh, actually, people? we have a very good system. We have the chief secretary and radiation chief secretary co coordinating this. I've been attending the chief ministers' uh, coordination meeting every day with armed forces, with everybody concerned, all senior secretaries okay. concerned, all the various departments. And um, so they are coordinating at the district level. It is the district collector okay. who is coordinating it. Right. So basically, it is the district collector who will take charge of these things at the district level. So we have a very good system out there. Okay. Yeah. Apart from and the, the district collectors are very very efficient people in Kerala. Right. Apart from the human tragedy, we've seen visuals of uh, uh, dogs, uh, helpless, uh, hapless souls, you know, who, who are stuck in water, and we've seen a huge number of dogs and cattle. Uh, who are just floating in water and how are they being rescued is there a plan to put them somewhere well a lot of cattle place? a lot yeah. of cattle have yeah. lost i mean my my uh, sister's house had 200 cows oh all dead in fact my sister was lives on the river bank and uh, they got stuck about uh, they she got all her neighbors into her house they got stuck on the first floor right. a helicopter came that way and tried to rescue them and my sister said sorry no either we all survive or we all perish together so they sent the helicopter away because the helicopter couldn't take all of them Unfortunately, yesterday the water level went down, and my sister, uh, you know, uh, could be came out. Yeah. So um, uh, we have a whole lot of cattle dead, dogs and other and animals pets dead because Kerala every home has pets. Right. Okay. So this is all going to cause um, a huge uh, environment. I mean, uh, health hazard. Absolutely. Yeah. Apart from the fact that so many of these uh, voiceless animals died, very tragic. Yeah. So. Uh, these are things which you need to, which are which are going to be very difficult to handle. Right. Yeah. And uh, all this to get back to normalcy would take how much time, approximately, if you were to calculate from today? They, I was at um, at, at uh, some of the relief centers, and uh, they were going back home because the water levels were coming down. Mm. I said, "Do you have your home still?" Most of them said, "No, our houses have collapsed." No, where do they go? Right. Yeah. Yesterday, I was called to a church to speak after the Sunday service. I couldn't speak. I, I mean, I, I almost wept. I said, uh, my people are dying, you know. So it's difficult, very, very difficult. But what, uh, Mr. Alphonse, what, what are the learning lessons we need to really, uh, I mean, how do we gear ourselves up for, I mean, without getting into blame game, without whether it was under preparedness of authorities, it is a, it is a disaster which the entire nation together is facing. It's not about being Kerala or not being in Kerala. It's a calamity which the entire nation is facing. So, as a nation, what are the learning lessons we need to learn from this uh, particular floods? Couple of things. We got to be very, very careful about environment. Okay. Yeah. Even though uh, I've told you that Kerala, the forest cover has gone up. Right. I think we got to, we got to keep watching. We need to, we need to nurture our environment every day. Right. We can't really fill up our party fields and come up with housing colonies. Right. You know, we need water to stay. We can't, uh, uh, we can't touch. We need to have sustainable tourism. All this is so important. Number two. Um, when you we, say sustainable we, tourism, what does it mean? Well, it means we can't really afford to destroy the environment. I think it's so important. We can just kind of have tourists coming there and polluting the place and going away, living there. And also when we build, we need to ensure that, you know, we do the least kind of damage to the environment. We need to live there. I mean, we all need to survive together. It's so important. Um, secondly, I think uh, 
we need to improve our uh, med predictions. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we, this was something I was about yes, to ask. We need to improve our med predictions because I've seen the data and there's been huge variation from whatever was predicted. But of course, it was massive rains, and uh, even if the predictions were better, could we have been better prepared? Dealt with it much better. Yes, marginally better because there's so much rain everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, uh, it was difficult. Now, uh, some of the areas, I mean, if you had better predictions like Changanur, it was never supposed to be underwater. That is the worst affected area. Now, if we had some other predicting that this area with this kind of water was going to be affected, then we could have moved our people right. more. Uh, point is, a lot of people don't want to move on. They say, no, 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 we, we, are, we are not going to be so much. Yeah. So, a lot of people are also reluctant to move. Well, we could have dealt with it better, you know. So, I think weather prediction technologies need but to be But are better. these reports also true where we've heard that people are not wanting to move out of their homes? They say that they refuse to go to the relief camps. Are there families like that as well? There, there were some because, you know, all their position was there. And then um, they didn't want to leave and they thought, no, 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 water is reached only up to this level now. You know, we can go up the first floor, maybe go up the attic and so we don't need to move out. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, people have to really be more uh, discreet and to really move out when they see a danger coming. I think they really need to move out because if they had to move to our shelters, our relief camps, it would have been so much easier for us. Yeah. Now, a big worry over the past one week was how do we get these people out, out of their homes? Yeah. So, like, the, the rescue teams which are reaching, they're convincing the families to go to their relief teams? Well, yes. Uh, relief some, uh, camps? Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, like from Kutunad, that yeah. entire area, Alap district, Kutunad is completely a submerged in water. Right. We had moved a whole lot of them into, into rescue shelters mm -hmm. and uh, relief camps. And, and, of course, we had to move them out from there because the entire district again submerged, more and more area submerged. So, we moved, anybody who came to the relief camps, we handled them very well. Right. Yeah. But other people, yes, some still stayed home. That's the reason why some of them are stuck, but some of some were completely unpredicted. The water came so fast. Yeah. And again, as you said, uh, some of the dams opened and we didn't know exactly um, you know, how much it would submerge, you know. In fact, uh, don't you think that this is also one of the learning lessons? I mean, we need to really gear up our dam safety, the way we are handling the <coughs> dams. I mean, it's not about just one Iduki dam. There are so many dams across the country. I mean, whenever a disaster of this scale happens, people do start raising questions that whether we were underprepared, whether we handled the dam properly. So, uh, as far as the dam safety is concerned, no, we what are the learning we, lessons? We need, I think we are completely unprepared. Dam safeties. Now, I don't want to bring up an issue here now, Mulla right, right. uh, I don't want to discuss it now. I right. think we need to discuss these right. things later. Right. I think. Um, and also, who, this whole lot of decide, riparian sharing who, between Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Yeah, who decides whether, whether a dam is safe or not? Right. I think we just need to have more of uh, technology to decide. Um, is Supreme Court really the authority with the, with the, with the expertise to decide? Or is some institute, uh, how do you decide Mullapiriya Dam, which is 125 years old, Absolutely. built of Surki, not with one gram of, uh, gram of steel, and it's a massive dam with 12.7 TMC, whether it is safe or not, can Indian Institute of Technology decide? Do they have the expertise? Well, well that's, I, that's I, a serious, huge, I seriously yeah. doubt. So these are again issues which we need to discuss, but I think these issues can wait till the, Absolutely, till the our, because, our current issue is over. Yeah. And uh, since you've been traveling, uh, now you'll be off and on in Kerala, so you take care of yourself, sir. Thank Tra you very much. Traveling uh, thank you very to Kerala. Much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank you very much. So that's it on this episode of To The Point. See you next time with another personality. Goodbye and thanks for watching.